So in today's video, we're going to move away from looking at Lightroom and we're going to focus on something that's been added to Photoshop. Now this is the latest version which is Photoshop CC 2017 and we're going to take a look at what they've added to the Liquify filter. So if you're familiar with what the Liquify filter offers us, I'm sure that you've also seen the way that it can be used to modify the way that models look in photographs. Now this is the kind of thing that the Liquify filter was generally developed for, and if you're the kind of person that doesn't necessarily have the time or the inclination to sit down and learn how to get the best out of this, just to make some simple edits to a model's face, then you're really going to enjoy the new additions to the Liquify filter. So let's take a look at how we can use it, all the new features that have been added to that, and let's use this for photograph as the basis for this tutorial. So let's kick this off by opening up the Liquify filter and seeing what's been added to it. So we can do that by simply coming up to filter and just choosing Liquify. That will then open up the Liquify dialog box and you can see on the left hand side we've got all the different ways we could interact in the same way that we've always had in there. And I'm not going to cover those tools because they've been covered in depth on a multitude of videos. What we're going to concentrate on is over on the right hand side where we've got the Face Aware Liquify. So once we open that up, you can see that it says select face. We've got face number one. So if you've got multiple people in the, in the, the, uh, the image, then you can use this to identify which ones you're going to edit and which ones you're going to modify. For this example, we've only got one particular portrait on this photograph. So you can see it's broken down into four distinct sections, the eyes, nose, mouth and face shape. And we can use those and we can expand those out and you can see if we look at the eyes for example, we now have a range of different options that are focusing specifically on the eyes in the image. So let's just zoom in so we can see a little better what we're working with. So let's focus on the face. You can see we've got the eye size, height, width and tilt. We've also got the eye distance. We could then go through and link those through to each other as well. So if we want to modify each eye independently, we can easily do that just by using the left or the right hand slider, and we can increase or decrease, the, decrease these by going to the left or to the right respectively. So if we go over to the left hand side, keep an eye on the left eye, you'll see as we modify, that changes in this example, the size of the eye. So you can see we can go crazy size, or we can bring it back down and just make some subtle reductions. So we can easily increase or decrease. Like I say, if we want to link those two together, we can do that very easily just by simply clicking on the chain icon. That now links both eyes together. So any modification we make to the left or the right eye will be replicated on the opposite eye. So as we start to reduce the size, you can see now both eyes have been affected and the same if we start to increase the size. So all very quick and easy. We can do the same then with the eye height. Again, we've got the chain link there, so we can use that to link the two together. So let's just do that as an example, and you can see as we do that, we start to adjust the actual eye itself. So if you've got someone that's squinting a little bit and you want to make their eyes just open up that little bit more, then the eye height is definitely a good way of doing that, where we can just sort of open the eyes up to give it a bit more sort of focused look. Next up, we've got the eye width. Again, I'll link that together, and you'll see that once we start to modify that, then the eye starts to get larger width-wise, so we can make bigger eyes. So if we've got a, a a model that has smaller eyes or larger eyes, we want to modify that, you can very easily use these sliders to do that. So you can see we can quickly make modifications. And obviously if you've got someone that their eyes are not the same and you want to add some symmetry to it, you can easily just uncheck check the chain link and then you can modify each eye independently. And the same goes with the eye tilt, we can use that, we can modify, and you can see that we can easily adjust the tilt of the eyes to change the expression, quite easy to do. And then finally, we've also got the eye distance. And that, as its name suggests, if we take over to the left-hand side, we put the eyes closer together. Go to the right-hand side, it puts the eyes farther apart. But what you should notice, if we take this as a slightly extreme example, is the modifications that it's doing to the image look very natural. We're not getting any sort of artifacts around the eyes themselves where we're moving this around. It all looks really normal. You wouldn't know that these things have been adjusted if you didn't see the stages that we're going through right now. So let's just put that back to its zero point. And we'll just simply go and close these back up. Let's put the eye width back to where it was. Same with the right eye, or roughly where they are, that'll do. Okay, so next up we've got the nose. And you can see we've got less options in there, so we can alter the nose height and the nose width. So again, we can easily modify the way that the model looks in these. So if we take the nose height, for example, you can see we can 
move that up or down and again we're getting really good looking examples so we're not getting any kind of strange sort of degradation or repeating patterns or anything in there that we might end up with if we we're trying to do this manually and the same goes with the nose width we can easily fine tune that nose just make it slightly smaller or we can make it larger however we want to sort of work with that very quick and easy so again you can see we've got several options in there that make this whole process quick and easy and you don't need to be a, a sort of professional retoucher to quickly come in and adjust the way that someone looks so next up we've got the mouth and you can see we now have five options available in there so if we've got someone that sort of isn't looking the happiest we can try and modify that with a smile so you can see that we can easily sort of turn the corners of the mouth up to to change the appearance of the mouth if you go too far with any of these you know with an image that is a good starting point like this it can very quickly look unnatural but you know if you're using this just to make subtle tweaks to it just to really fine tune the way that the model looks then you can get some great results out of it and the same goes if we take it to the left hand side it'll take the corners of the mouth and sort of push those down so you can see it's now changing that and this example sort of has a bit more of a a sullen look should we say so you can use that to adjust then with the upper lip, if we've got someone that has, for example, very thin lips, we can use this to plump those up. So you can see that if we start to increase that, that will increase the size of the, the upper lip. And the same if we go to the left-hand side, it'll decrease that. So if we've got someone that has fuller lips and we want to change that, we can quickly and easily use that to compensate. And the same with the lower lip. So in this example, this model has quite sort of voluptuous lips, especially the lower lip. So we can easily reduce that if we want to by taking it over to the right hand side alternatively if we want to make it even more so we can take it to the left hand side looks a little unnatural when we start to go like that but you know the options are there should we say so let's just fine tune that just thin that lip down let's just plump up the top lip a little bit not going crazy so you can see we can change the way the mouth looks if we turn on and off with the preview you can see there's before there's after subtle changes but they're the kind of thing that can make the difference between exactly what you're looking for and not quite there so we've got the mouth width and the mouth height as their name suggests we can easily take someone if they've got a smaller mouth mouth or they're pouting and their mouth is a little bit puckered you want to make it look a little larger you can easily do that or alternately you, you can do it the opposite way again you can see we can get pretty realistic looking results and then we've got the mouth height so you can see that kind of opens the mouth up. Now, I tend to find with this that if the mouth is just slightly open like this, it can very quickly look kind of strange. And if I take it out, you can see she suddenly looks like she's got the worst teeth in the world and a bit of a strange looking grimace on her face. But, you know, the options there, should you need to tweak ever so slightly, you want to close the mouth up a little bit, we can do that. Again, let's take a look at before and after. So quite a change to the mouth all done without even needing to know how to use the liquify tool and what all the tools on the left hand side do so very quick and easy so next up let's take a look at the face shape now this is one that you can get really good results on if you know what you're doing with it so let's just take that back out so we can see more of the picture the forehead chin height jawline and face width now as their name suggests if we start taking the forehead now with this because she's so close to the top of the image we're going to start getting some uh, should we say the image is going to start to pull in because the liquify filter is pulling that down so it's not going to give us a great effect we'd have to crop after this but obviously you want to go the opposite way you want to increase the size of the forehead you could do that in this image and it'll work quite well so let's set that back to where it was the chin height as its name suggests will adjust the length of the chin so you can see if we start to take that over to the right hand side it reduces the chin if we take it to the left hand side we start to get a longer chin so again you can compensate for any characteristics that the face may have that you're not happy with next up we've got the jawline and what that'll do is that will make it wider or smaller depending on the size you go so if we take that over to the left hand side you can see we're reducing the jaw so this model has quite a pronounced jawline she has quite a square jaw we can take that over to the left and we can reduce that and slim the bottom of the face ever so slightly just to give it a slightly more pleasing end result like I say this is all subjective and then the face width finally does exactly what it says it will adjust the width of the face so you can see we can make slightly wider or we could pull that in and give us just a subtle result and then you can use the combination of all these to get the result that you're 
you're after. So if we take a look at the preview, there's the before, there's the after. All very subtle, none of that looks like it's been heavily retouched, but it does make a difference to the way that the model looks. Now, whether you agree or disagree with this kind of body modification through software, I'm not in this to, to discuss that topic. I'm just showing you what the Liquify tool and the new options that have been added to it offer you as a retoucher when you're working with faces and models and so on. Well, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. So once we've done that, we can just click on OK. That will then confirm the alterations. And you can say if we do a Control Z, we'll take a look before and take a look at after. Now, either way, she's a beautiful model, but it's all there should you need to make those changes now. And the Liquify tool makes it considerably easier with all the facial modification enhancements it has had to it. Well, I hope you found this journey into Photoshop instead of Lightroom interesting. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add. If any comments, questions or feedback on this video, pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.